Okay, so today it's Sunday and we're going for a walk down to Mekapong village. It's a famous little traditional looking village here up in the mountains and around Mayong in Chiang Mai. So yes, let's go for a walk and go exploring. Uh, it's so hard to bloody get parking up here. If you're on a motorbike, probably easy, but when you're in a car, you're gonna be looking for ages sometimes to get a car park and we're just lucky today to find one. And um, so just be aware of that. The traffic's always bloody heavy here because everyone wants to come here, take a photo, eat in the local restaurants, eat the local street food. And it's just a popular place to come and take photos. But let's go check it out. May Kampong village is a small village located near the creek surrounded by yellow flowers called Kapong flower, hence the name of the village. It is the name of flowers combined with the word May from the river that passed through the village. May Kampong village is about 100 years old, although the village of Ban Ma Kapong was not officially founded until the early 1900s. It is thought that the first farmers moved to the area from nearly nearby Doi Saket more than 200 years ago. So most of the population migrated from Doi Saket for agriculture. Then the settlers came here to do agriculture, which were to make local delicacies known as Miyang from fermented tea leaves. Over the years, the demand for Miyang dropped and the villagers started to look for other sources of incomes. And correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, M-I-E-N-G. In the 1980s, the people of Makapong began growing coffee under the Royal Project. The villagers also used the stream running through the village to produce hydroelectric power. In the 1990s, the Thai government encouraged each sub-district or, or Tambon to produce a product, service or activity that could be associated with what is called OTOP. The idea of OTOP was initially a concern for the village headman until he decided to propose Makapong as an eco-tourism village to take advantage of the natural surroundings. Makapong um, accommodation program has proven to be a big success benefiting visitors and villagers alike. The village acts as a cooperative with revenue brought into the village used to help local projects to support the community overall. Afterwards, the village won awards of accommodation and various eco-tourism initiatives. So that's a piece of interesting history for you. Apart from the beautiful village, which is really nice to work, walk through, where you can get a variety of Thai street foods, as well as a variety of little cafes and restaurants where you can sit and grab a bite to eat. And some of the restaurants have a good view further up on the hill as well. Or in the main village down below there, you can just sit with the running water of the creeks running right next to you. Now, some of the local landmarks there is one called Flight of the Gibbon. It's an eco-tourism at Makapong and was supported by um, the zip lining company Flight of the Gibbon. The adventure activity brings tourists to the area who might have not ever visited the place and experienced the local way of life, traditional Lana hospitality, which is found in Makapong. Another landmark is Makapong Waterfall, which I've been to myself, and it's quite beautiful and is the origin of the creek that runs through the village. Some seven stories in height, it is, situation as far, it is situated at the far end of the village and offers clear, cold water, banks covered in ferns and moss. And another landmark is Wat Mei Kapong. The village and the temple are built together with the community settlement. The chapel is in the middle of the pond. The old temple made from hardwood and crafted teak wood in Lana design. And you'll see that later in this video and it is very beautiful temple. And it could be very relaxing to also sit there and do a bit of meditation. But as you can see, as we're walking around here, there is a lot of those little restaurants, cafes that I was talking about earlier with a variety of food on the menu as well. And I can highly recommend stopping here to get a bite to eat and try some of the local food. I remember I got from here once um, some delicious honey with honeycomb and oh my God, it was nice. I really enjoyed it when I brought it back um, home. But it is a great little drive up here too. There's a lot of cafes on the way up to this village. There's also a lot of little resorts where you can stay and have weekends away up in these mountains. And there is a fair bit to see if you're um, after little cafes, beautiful scenery and um, 
yeah, and you just love nature, then coming up to this Makapong village area is worth a trip, I'm just going to say. And here's just one of the restaurants, but we decided not to eat here and we turned around and uh, went to the other side. We weren't, we didn't have anything against the food. We just decided that we wanted to try this um, food here. I think because Anne was more after shabu, which she likes and she thought would be easy for the whole family to eat. But this was the little, that restaurant across the road there, those two paces are often popular for taking photos, but also popular for tourists to stop and have a bite to eat. But we decided to stop into this restaurant here, where you can just watch all the tourists walking up and down. Um, but yeah, we can just relax, have a beer, have a drink, have whatever you, you want in this particular place. But I don't know, I just noticed people really enjoying just sitting up there, chilling out, and um, relaxing just in the village. Now, um, it was a little bit of rain this day, but not too bad. Now, looking inside this village, uh, inside this restaurant, I should say, we just decided to stop here, have a bite to eat. But what I love about this place was the running water right next to us. Yes, they did serve alcohol here and beers and stuff like that. But I was more about just relaxing with nature. So this is the main creek that runs through the village coming down from the waterfall. And it's, I'm surprised at how beautifully crystal clear this creek is. And it is quite noisy though, I'm just gonna say. And, um, but very beautiful. And I was relaxing here, taking a lot of photos, doing a bit of filming, but I was really just chilling with um, being in nature. And I really enjoyed this particular aspect of it. And this was the restaurant next door. I just happened to film people sitting there. But I, the guy pointed out to me I could walk down the stairs and get closer to the waterfall and um, just take some decent photos here. But as you can see, it's very beautiful here and um, in this area. And it's definitely worth a drive up to the top of the mountains here. Yeah, so the cafes along here, some of them run right next to the creek like we're sitting at the moment. And it's kind of relaxing with that sound of nature that you actually hear behind you as you're having a bite to eat. So we're just ordering some Thai food now and I'm going to show you guys what we actually ordered. But I always love this Makapong village because I just like, I don't know, it's just beautiful up here. And me and Anne always talk about like staying at one of the resorts up this way, up in the mountains here. But yeah, it's worth a visit. And whether you're coming on the tourist bus, motorbike ride or driving your own car. But again, just a reminder, the parking's not always the best. So after chilling just by the um, creek for a little while and taking some good photos, it was time to eat. And we had ordered some shabu. And I do like this style of barbecue, but the meat here was super fresh. And um, we really did enjoy it. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of variety of meat there that's had a little bit of seasoning on it. And we're gonna cook it on this barbecue. We actually have one of these barbecues at home and they're really good for cooking on. But um, yes, of course, drinking Coca-Cola. I was not in the mood for beer being up in the mountains there. And, um, but I do like some of the local herbal teas. I should have ordered herbal tea. Like, you know, like your chrysanthemum tea. Or um, they're absolutely delicious in Thailand. So if you're up in Chiang Mai, do try some of the herbal teas. But we were really enjoying this because the meat was so fresh and so nice. And um, so I definitely do recommend Shabu in this area. And um, yeah, and it fed us all. We did go for some seconds. Some other facts about um, Makapong Village is that it's about 50 kilometers east of Chiang Mai, and it drives up this pretty windy road um, between forests and mountains to actually get there. It has about 130 houses there and about 370 inhabitants, what I was reading online. And it pretty much has become a model of community tourism in Thailand. And also, the locals gain the money directly from tourism. And there's no big hotel chains up here, and there's not even 7-Elevens up here. It's run completely by the locals. Now, I'd been up here a few times, but I actually hadn't check it, checked out this uh, temple, which has got two names to it. Um, Wat Kata Pru Aksa Temple. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, or what may Kapong, as it's also known as. 
is a beautiful temple made out of wood. Now, you've got this temple first where the cars park, which is quite beautiful and got some nice paintings inside of it of the royal family, and it's just nicely decorated inside. And I saw a lot of people coming in here to pray, relax, and just sit for a while in quiet. And, um, and when you park in this particular area, you make a donation of about 20 baht just to park here and um because it is pretty hard to find parking in the area but the it's just really nice as you can see these beautiful old paintings and pictures on the wall as well as some more modern ones as we come down to pictures of the current king and queen which are also in here within this temple but i did find it quite beautiful inside and um, I just wanted to show you guys some of the photos here that were actually in this temple. And you can see it's made out of beautiful wood here. And, and here's the main prayer area where people come to pray to Buddha. And um, again, I always find these Buddhist temples so beautiful inside. But what's more beautiful is you, you go for, walk down to the stream a little bit and um, right underneath this temple and there's another small temple where a lot of people come to pray and I think there's a little sheet there that you can read out when you go in there and and went in there and done some prayers as well but there was a lot of people coming and going taking photos inside but also saying their prayers and other people were just relaxing in the ambience of this place because it was very peaceful and beautiful just to sit here with just the sound of the running water coming down the hill and it's not a very big temple, as you can see this one, but it's right on the creek. And the whole area is just very peaceful. And I don't know, the, uh, the, the ambience is just great here. And you can just sit here in nature and just chill out and have that mindfulness episode where you just sit there embracing your senses and what am I seeing, hearing, smelling, touching? Because it is one of those places where you can just do quiet contemplation and quiet meditation as well. And you've got these little stones that you walk across to get to the other end as well. And um, we're lucky on this day, though. The weather wasn't too bad. There was some little rain coming down, but nothing too heavy. So the day ended with us at this temple here. There was other places to explore, but we didn't get to them all on this day. And if you like these sort of videos of me hiking around Thailand or Chiang Mai and exploring unusual places, or exploring track places just a little bit off the beaten track, or just life in Thailand overall, then yes, hit like and please subscribe. And if you've got any suggestions of where we could visit, please add comments. Thank you.